The transport liner Bahar was constructed by Barclays, Curl and Company at Glasgow, Scotland in 1943. By March of 1944, the Bahar was operating in the Indian Ocean when she encountered the Imperial Japanese Navy while they were conducting raids, and what follows is a very messy atrocity that has largely been forgotten as time passes on. The 8,000 ton transport loaded with zinc would be encountered by the 16,000 ton heavy cruiser Tone. Tone ends up being the lead ship of the final class of Japanese heavy cruisers commissioned before Japan surrendered in 1945, and the vessel is equipped with eight 20.3 centimeter guns all located on the bow, which can make quick work of a transport like Bihar, which they promptly did. In charge of the Japanese force was Vice Admiral Nomasa Sakonju, who was aboard the heavy cruiser Aoba, while the Tone itself was under command by Captain Haro Mayazumi. Now this is where information starts to become inconsistent, so I will try to paint the best picture possible with the available information. On the 9th of March 1944, Bihar is sunk by main battery fire from the heavy cruiser Tone, and on board were 111 people, which includes crew and passengers. Of this, three people were killed in the action, and Tone picks up the 108 survivors. Once the survivors were on board Tone, they were stripped of their accessories, which included clothing, and they were tied using rope on the main deck of Tone. Over the course of the next six days, the survivors were moved down into the lower decks of the ship, and while they were both on the main deck and within the ship's hull, they were regularly abused by the Japanese sailors. On the 16th of March, Tone, having given up its Indian Ocean raids, had rendezvoused at Batava with the heavy cruisers Aoba and Chikuma. While Tone was anchored at Batava, 36 of Bihar's survivors were disembarked. This included officers, English-speaking seamen, and the seven passengers. The other 72 men were kept aboard the Tone, and commands came from Aoba to dispose of them. Now, this was not the first time Aoba had given Tone this order. In reality, Aoba had told Tone two times via radio signal while all 108 survivors were still on Tone to dispose of all of them. However, Captain Mayazumi had overlooked this order and stalled for time. Tone would lift anchor and then sail away from Batava with the remaining 72 Bihar survivors. And during the dark hours of the 18th of March, 1944, Tone's officers would gather the survivors on the after deck where the aircraft catapults are. They would promptly keep them tied, physically assault them, and then behead them, dumping their bodies into the ocean beneath. This ends up being, by far, the greatest atrocity committed on board one of the Japanese naval vessels during the Second World War. However, it was not an entirely agreed upon atrocity by the commanding officers, as after the war, one of the men involved actually gave testimony against certain officers whom had boasted about their actions after committing the crime. This man is simply referred to in sources as Commander Me. I'm not certain as to who this man is or what his rank was. However, he seems to be referred to as second in command of the Raider Squadron, and he was openly against the beheading order, but was not punished by the Japanese Navy at the time. He merely stepped aside and let the beheading carry through as he was powerless to stop it. However, it's safe to say he got his revenge when many of the men involved in this incident were executed by the Allies following the war. So this leaves a big question. We now know the fate of 72 survivors. What happened to the other 36? They were broken up into smaller groups and spread out across the Japanese Empire, where they would be abused in POW camps, died during captivity, or be used for slave labor. In the post-World War II environment during war crime trials, a few of these survivors who managed to continue life through Japanese captivity would give evidence during the war crime trials, which would help send their assailants to the gallows. So what happens to the two men whom were behind the massacre? Vice Admiral Sakunju was executed in 1948 for war crimes, with the Bihar being one of the largest stains on his reputation, and Captain Mayazumi, due to his resilience at first to commit this crime, was only given a seven-year prison sentence. However, it was still judged that he needed to pay some time, since the crime was eventually committed under his orders. 
While a wide variety of people would pay for the crimes they committed during World War II, the Imperial Japanese Navy as a whole still holds a relatively clean reputation as being the good child of the Japanese military while the army carried out all the dirty deeds. However, this incident certainly shows, plus a few others, that this was not the case. The Japanese Navy could be just as ruthless and violent as the army if it felt it needed to be. Well, hopefully you have learned something new about the Imperial Japanese Navy. If so, why not leave a like and a comment down below, and have a wonderful day.